One of my favorite parts of the world uh, is Central Asia. It's one of those places that's rarely talked about, yet it's so insanely diverse in terms of its geography and its people. It's filled with fascinating history and it's home to some of the tallest mountain ranges on earth. It's home to vast steppe lands and ancient deserts. So for today's video, we're going to be talking about one of Central Asia's most unique geographical features. It's a fascinating lake located high up in the Tian Shan Mountains. This is Isik Kul, one of the most unique lakes we have here on Earth. And as always, this is Ali and welcome back to Urban Atlas. Nestled in the heart of the Tian Shan Mountains in Kyrgyzstan, Isik Kul is a geographical marvel that challenges our understanding of what's possible at extreme altitudes. At 1600 meters above sea level, that's over a mile high, this lake is roughly the same elevation as Denver, Colorado. But unlike Denver's continental climate, this lake creates a more coastal climate in the middle of one of Asia's most rugged mountain ranges. You see, Isik Kul is the second deepest saline lake in the world after the Caspian Sea stretching 182 kilometers long and 60 kilometers wide. It's roughly the size of the state of Delaware, but with a depth that reaches down 668 meters. This makes it the eighth deepest lake in the world and the 11th largest lake in the world by volume. Isik refers to warm lake in Kyrgyz, and despite being at this extreme altitude, it never freezes, ever. Even when temperatures around the lake can drop to negative 20 degrees in winter, the lake maintains a temperature between 2 to 4 degrees during the peak winter months. Well, the secret lies beneath the surface. This lake sits in a massive tectonic depression, essentially a giant bowl formed by the collision of continental plates millions of years ago. This geological activity created something extraordinary, a network of underwater thermal springs that continuously pump warm, mineral-rich water into the lake from deep within the earth. These springs are doing two things. They're keeping the lake warm and they're creating a completely unique ecosystem. The water has a salinity level of about 0.6, making it too salty to drink, but making it perfect for swimming. And locals, well, they've been taking advantage of this for centuries. Especially during the Soviet era, sanatoriums and resorts were built along its shores and people would travel far from across the USSR to experience this warm oasis in the mountains. In fact, legend has it that Tamerlane, the famous Turco-Mongol emperor and the founder of the Timurid Empire, had a summer headquarters here at Lake Isikul. The mineral content of the water was believed to have healing properties. And honestly, when you're swimming in 20 degree water while surrounded by snow-capped peaks, it probably does feel pretty magical. Now here's another geographical puzzle that makes this lake so unique. It's what geographers call an endhoric basin or a closed drainage system. Over 100 rivers and streams flow into this lake, but nothing seems to flow out. Where does all that water go? Well, for one, it evaporates. But there are other theories that may suggest there are other ways the water leaves the lake. Some hydrologists claim that the lake's water filters deep underground into the Chu River, which is a nearby river in northern Kyrgyzstan and southern Kazakhstan. Over the past 50 years, Isik Kul's water level has dropped by about 2 meters. The main reason for this is the diversion of water from rivers that feed the lake. You see, these rivers are heavily utilized for local irrigation and redirected to support the agricultural needs downstream in some Central Asian countries. And in recent times, this has led to a decrease in water levels in Isik Despite the declining water levels, the lake is still several meters higher than it was during medieval times. In fact, divers have found the remains of submerged settlements in shallow areas around the lake. This is primarily because historically, the lake has had ebbs and flows in terms of its water level. Some scientists describe the lake as one that breathes. Over the centuries, the water level rises and then falls. But scientists have not yet discovered the reason for these changes. The lake has an interesting history. You see, Isik Kul was a stopover on the Silk Road, which was a land route for travelers from the Far East to Europe. Interestingly, many historians believe that the lake was the point of origin for the Black Death that plagued Europe and Asia during the early to mid-14th century. 
And that's because researchers have found preserved genetic material from individuals buried in two cemeteries near this lake and determined that the Black Death was present here in 1338. Researchers theorized that the Black Death started here and then traveled through the Silk Road back towards Europe, as well as China, via medieval merchants who unknowingly carried the infested vermin along with them. Which makes sense, because back in the days of the Silk Road, caravans would stop along the lake shores to rest and resupply, and then move on either east towards China or west towards Europe. And there's more. Archaeological expeditions have recovered 2,000-year-old bronze artifacts, medieval Islamic coins, and even remnants of a Bronze Age civilization that predates the Silk Road by over a thousand years. But Issyk's geographical influence extends far beyond its waters. This massive lake creates what meteorologists call a lacustrine climate. Essentially, it's so large that it generates its own weather patterns and creates a microclimate that extends for dozens of kilometers in every direction. During the summer months, the lake absorbs enormous amounts of solar energy, moderating temperatures and creating cooling breezes that prevent the extreme heat you'd expect at this latitude. In winter, all that stored thermal energy is slowly released, keeping the surrounding valleys significantly warmer than they would be otherwise. And this unique microclimate has created isolated pockets of biodiversity. Several species of fish found nowhere else on Earth have evolved in this lake's waters. In the last decade, yields of all fish species have declined significantly due to a combination of overfishing and predation by two introduced invasive species those being the pike perch and the rainbow trout. The lake supports over 300 species of birds, including flamingos. Yes, flamingos at over 5,000 feet above sea level in Central Asia. But to truly understand Issyk's unique geography, we need to zoom out and take a look at the massive geological forces that created it. The lake sits in what's called the Issyk Basin. Essentially, it's just a valley formed when a block of Earth's crust dropped down beneath two fault lines. This happened as the Indian subcontinent collided with Asia, creating not just the Himalayas, but also the Tian Shan Range. The same tectonic forces that are still pushing Mount Everest higher each year are also affecting this lake. The region experiences regular seismic activity. In fact, in the year 1911, a massive earthquake changed the shape of the lake. This earthquake caused underwater landslides that altered the lake bottom topography. And this may have blocked some of the thermal springs at the bottom of the lake. Local reports from that time describe the water level dropping dramatically almost overnight. But perhaps no period in this lake's history shows the power of its unique geography quite like the Soviet era. In the 1930s, Moscow discovered what local nomads had known for centuries. This warm lake in the mountains could be transformed into something extraordinary. They looked at this lake's year-round swimming temperatures, its mineral-rich waters, and its stunning mountain backdrop and saw an opportunity, and thus began one of the most ambitious tourism projects in Central Asian history. By the 1960s, over 20 hotels and resorts dotted the shoreline. The geography that made Issyk-Kul unique, those thermal springs, and that microclimate was now serving hundreds of thousands of vacationers every year. Families would travel all the way from Moscow, Leningrad, and even Siberia to swim in those mineral-rich waters. After the breakup of the USSR, these hotels and resorts fell on hard times. An example of a resort town on Issyk Kol's north shore is the town of Cholpon Ata. With a modest population of 14,000 residents, this resort town once housed thousands more. During the Soviet era, it was much more frequented by vacationers brought here in organized mass tours from other parts of the USSR. Another town on the shores of this lake is the town of Balakchi. Located at the western end of Lake Isakol in Kyrgyzstan, it has a population of 42,000 residents. Once a major industrial and transport center during the Soviet era, it's lost most of its economic base after the collapse of the Soviet Union similar to many of the towns in this region. However, the largest city in this region is the city of Karakol. It's the fourth largest city in Kyrgyzstan, and it's located near the eastern tip of Lake Isikol. Today, it's used as a base for excursions into the surrounding area and Lake Isikol itself. During the Soviet period, the Soviet Navy actually operated an extensive facility at the lake's east end, close to the city of Karakol. 
Here, they tested submarine and torpedo technology. Isiko stands as one of the planet's most extraordinary geographical features. But the more I researched this lake, the more I realized that this lake isn't just a geographical anomaly. It's just more proof of how epic our planet really is. You see, this lake has survived ice ages, mountain building events, and civilizations rising and falling. It's been here this whole time, for millions of years. And that's why this lake is a Ramsar site of global significant biodiversity. It's specially protected. In fact, it's the first of its kind in Kyrgyzstan. The Isik Kul State Reserve was established back in 1948 to protect the unique nature and landscape of Isik Kul. And by the year 2000, it was also covered by UNESCO as a World Biosphere Reserve. And as always, if you like content like this, remember to give this video a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And if you're interested in supporting this channel and my content, take a look at my new YouTube store. I have a collection of digital maps for sale and I'll be adding more each and every day. It's a good way for you to support this channel if you like my content. And of course, get access to some awesome maps. You can also provide suggestions for the type of maps you'd like to see. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.